The Circle Empire's universe is made of interconnected circles, each containing loot to plunder and foes to defeat. You are the godlike leader of your tiny kingdom, hungry for power. Use your skills to hunt down increasingly powerful enemies and expand your empire. The game world changes every time you play. No two games are the same and you can grow pumpkins. The first thought that crossed my mind was... Circle Empires is a deceptively easy game and super cute and sure, at first this does indeed come across as somewhat shallow. You start off by building a storage, get your workers to work and before you know it you created your small tiny circle empire with an army. You invade the circle next to you, you win, build another storage, some more armies, rinse and repeat, congratulations, you've won. And then you get this. You can also just take a quick look at it from the main menu before you go to sleep or something. Progression, ladies and gentlemen, in its pure golden virtual form. And who doesn't like progression? However, the shallow gameplay I just described was on normal difficulty on a small map. It gets way more interesting pretty fast. Progression exists, but not in the form of a treasury for all you gold diggers out there, but in the form of the Monster Hunt game mode. There you can keep conquering circles, each time with different perks because of the hero you pick at the start, and each time against a tougher monster, on more circles and on higher difficulty. 9 circles on normal is pretty easy, 25 on extreme is a lot more challenging and requires some actual brain cells. And then there's two more difficulty settings, Nightmare and Impossible. At Nightmare, I got my ass handed to me, I can tell you that. After you've defeated certain monsters or played with certain heroes, you unlock new monsters to play against and new heroes to play with. You can imagine this keeps you going for quite some time. And in case you're done monster hunting, there are freeform modes like Full Conquest, where you conquer the whole world, and Imperial Conquest, where you also conquer the whole world. But this time against AI controlled empires, which is significantly tougher because they're actively expanding and trying to conquer you as well. And if you're still not done by then, there's a DLC available too, with more heroes to play and monsters to hunt. When looking at the actual gameplay, I find myself usually in the same situations. There's three phases in games like these. There's the starting phase, which is brutal, depending on the difficulty. You need to build up your economy and your army. Then there's the second phase in which you are actively fighting for map control until you reach the tipping point. Then the third phase starts. You've conquered a significant part, your resources are flowing in and you just can't keep creating units without having to think about it. You've won, but the AI doesn't know it yet. All that remains is to attack move your army from circle to circle, watching them crush the opposition. You can finally sit back and enjoy the view. The circle empires is therefore balanced enough. Ranged units have a ridiculous range, really, but so does the enemy, so I guess that's fair. Melee tactics work, but only in sheer numbers. They're cheap though, melee units. You can also build a ton of towers and then attack the neighboring circle empire and your towers will help out as well. You do spend a ton of resources on towers though and I found that just rushing in with armies is much more effective and also much more fun. Should you be unsure about your move, you can always quick save and quick load. If you want to cheat, that is. The Circle Empires offers you addictive gameplay with a fun progression system, tons of difficulty settings, lots of heroes to play and monsters to defeat and all in all it's a very well crafted casual RTS. The verdict? Definitely a buy if you like what you see here.